Okay, which of the following best describes the relationship between the housing cost index and median income by state? So it looks to be somewhat maybe moderately strong linear positive. So let's go over here. We need positive in there and it's definitely linear, so we're good. And I would come up with a, you know, possible R for this, maybe 0.6, something like that. And it's up there. So that's a good guess. Now, this is what confuses people. If you standardize variables, you're just changing the units of measurement. So if I measure your height and your weight, would it change the correlation between height and weight between a lot of people, depending on how I measure them? As in, all of a sudden, could it become negative? Could all of a sudden, the more you weigh, the shorter you are on average? And no, it won't change the relationship how we measure them. It doesn't matter if I measure you in, in inches or in feet. That will do nothing to change the relationship. So if we standardize them, it will not change the relationship. So changing the way we measure the variable does not change the relationship between the variables. If we had measured it in a different unit of measurement, would it have changed? It would not have changed at all. They stay correlated the same. It's not like all of a sudden, oh, there's a stronger correlation now. No, 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 not at all. Another state has a household income, a housing cost index of 600. Let's put that right here, 600, somewhere on, there we go. And a median income of 40,000, so it's over here. If this state was added, how would correlation change? It is an outlier, so it is going to lower correlation. I have my, my cursor over where it would be, and that pulls the cloud out. It's pulling it out, so correlation would be lower. If it was towards the center of it, if it was somewhere in here, it would make correlation stronger because it's in the center of the cloud. If it goes out towards the edge or further out of the cloud, it makes correlation weaker. Remember, you can draw around it, and if you make a circle, it's more like a, more like a zero for correlation, which is weaker correlation. And if it goes to more like a one, which would be points that would follow this pattern right here, it makes correlation stronger. Does the data provide proof, uh-oh, proof, that's a bad word in statistics, um, that by raising the median income in a state, housing cost index will also rise. And no, correlation is not causation. It never proves causation. So we, we did not do a test right here. So we can't say that. Correlation does not prove causation. So for this one, oh my gosh, let's see right here. What we can do is we can do this in jump, and you have jump because you're probably doing the project by now. So let's go ahead and copy the data. Now, when you go to paste the data into jump, go ahead and select right here and go to open in clipboard. And you want to do the bottom option, tab delimited. And it already has the data selected for you. You just need to use command C or control C. If you have a PC, you'll be using control C. In a Mac, you'll be using command C. And now go into jump. And when you're in jump, you want to open up a new window, which can be done with Command N or Control N, or File New Window, New Data Table. And let's get this nice and situated here. So now, this is the big part. Since we saw that there were column names, we need to paste with column names. And bada bing, bada boom, we have our data in jump. So remember, you need to use tab delimited, that's big. If it didn't paste properly here, you probably didn't do tab delimited, or you might not have pasted with column names. If you paste without column names, it'll look like this, and that's, don't do that. That'll not work. So this is an error right here of pasting without column names. If it's all bunched up into one column right here, you probably pasted in a format that was not tab delimited. Tab delimited seems to work best right here. So now, since we have our data in, you'll notice these are blue and they should be. If they're red, open up a new data sheet and paste with column names. If they're red, they should be blue. Sometimes people try to correct it and you have to change the data type and stuff. So just open up a new sheet, paste in there. This is what you should see. Blue and in separate columns. So now we can go to analyze, multivariate method, multivariate. And this is how easy the question is once you get past the first part. Here we are, and here's our correlation matrix. The correlation between time and calories is negative 0 0.737, 0 0.7373. There we go. So let's go back and enter in our answer. 
Now I want you to round. Watch out. A lot of people get this wrong because they forget to round. We need to go right here. There we go. If we were to change the way the correlation was uh, calculated, would it change? Or if we were to change the way the data was recorded? Not at all. Once again, it's not going to change the relationship between the two variables. So correlation is unaffected by scale, so it will not change. Good review by, for the test. That is a great statement. Correlation is unaffected by scale. Explain what this correlation means for this data. The correlation is, and I would say, we need to say it's negative. The correlation is strong negative correlation. Toddlers who spent more time at the table consumed fewer calories. If it's negative, that means more time, fewer calories. Positive would mean more time, more calories. But this is a negative correlation. Maybe something, who knows? And I think that's the last question. Evidently, something must be turn, like causing them to lose their appetite. What is wrong with this conclusion? And this conclusion right here is speculative. It's We can't say something is causing them to do that. Um, who knows what it was? We can't we can't possibly understand why without further investigation, maybe a, an actual um, scientific experiment. So once again, we have how to get the data into jump. So let's do it again. Let's go over here to the arrow or the little tab, go to copy to clipboard, and we need to go to tab delimited. It has the data selected, command C or control C. Go over to your jump spreadsheet right here and you can do control n or command n anywhere in jump that's the quickest way you can go to file new data table also but control n or command n is the quickest way just to get a new data table it works in anything like word or excel to open up a new instance so now we can do control shift v and that puts our data in you can do edit paste with column names that's the command i'm doing there on my keyboard Remember again, it should look blue right here and you should see the column names up there. If you get something that looks like this, you have done it incorrectly, you need to paste with column names. Do not try to correct it because it can cause problems. Just open up a new instance and use edit paste with column names and you will see this. It's probably one of the biggest errors I see when people do this assignment. So this is what you should see, blue, and they're up there. Now it's time to do it. Let's do the multivariate methods, multivariate, double click both of them. And here we are. Here is our correlation matrix, 0 0.9190, a strong positive linear correlation. So we need a strong positive linear correlation, and it looks like the only two are this one and this one. So I need to decipher the differences. They both have a 300 to 700 scale, 10 to 50, and we want calories on the x-axis. So, or fat, excuse me, fat on the x-axis. So right here, fat is on the x-axis. You see how this makes like, this one bends in a little bit and looks more like this one here. And the one over here is where, and if you scroll down a little bit, you can see this has the uh, fat on the x-axis. That's why fat would be down there. So that looks to be correct. What is the correlation? I think it was 0 0.9190 um, to thousands. That's 0 0.919. Which of the following best describes the association? It is a really strong positive linear correlation. So let's see here. The scatter plot and high correlation suggest a strong positive. There we go. Last question. Does the scatter plot indicate that it is appropriate to calculate a correlation? QQ straight enough, no outliers. Someone might say that this is an outlier right here, but I think we're fine. In the last one, you probably heard me say QQ straight enough, no outliers. That stands for quantitative, quantitative. Both variables are quantitative. Runs and attendance are quantitative. Straight enough, a straight line approximates the relationship, which a straight line does seem to approximate it here. No outliers. There are no outliers. There's really not any outliers here. So right here, yes, because uh, it appears to be straight. It's not because it's positive. It, it could be negative. It appears to be straight, so linear correlation and correlation will work right here. Linear correlation and linear regression is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Describe the association between attendance and runs scored. It is definitely positive, 
and so we can eliminate the ones that say negative. Straight, moderate, straight, weak. It looks to be more moderate to me because that's weak would be more spread out. Does this prove? No, 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 no. Correlation never proves anything. So um, there is no basis to make a claim of causation. There is no evidence of association. So there's no basis to make a claim of causation. There might be, you know, we might say it looks like there's some association here. But um, so we have evidence of association, but we can't say it proves um, association. Proves is too strong of a word unless we do a statistical uh, we do a statistical experiment, and then we can maybe talk about proof. That is for another class and for another time to do experiments. But uh, right here, we have proved nothing. 